Hi everybody. You're gonna have to meet with me from my car, it looks like this week, because whew, it is somewhere in the neighborhood of negative 15 feeling like outside, so we're not doing outdoor walks this week, just FYI. <laughs> anyway, this week we are talking about anchors on Learn to Love Your Story, and uh, my blog kind of laid out for you what it is that I'm talking about when I talk about anchors. There are their activities, their memories, their images, uh, their places, people, anything that really can anchor us to the feeling that we are loved, that we are safe and secure, that we're connected. These are basic needs. Remember that there are two ways in which a human being survives. One is physically and the other is interpersonally. They are hardwired in us and our fight flight response system will turn on when we're bullied, when we feel rejected, when we feel hurt by a partner or a friend, um, when we feel criticized, even on social media, right? So <clears throat> needing anchors comes up pretty frequently, honestly. And it is just this lovely little bag of tricks that you can have for yourself. Many of us kind of do this automatically. Like we just like, you know what? I'm just gonna let this go. I'm gonna go to that place or I'm, you know, I'm going into my kid's school. I'm just gonna turn this off and, and pick up my kid from school and enjoy the rest of my evening. Like that guy cutting me off in traffic, not my thing. So some of us do this a little bit more naturally than others. Uh, some people had families that taught them ways to do this and some didn't. You know, some of our families, um, parents didn't have great skills for regulating their emotions and so they didn't teach us great skills for regulating our emotions. Anchors are wonderful. The concept comes from polyvagal theory uh, by Deb Dana, Steve Porges. Um, they're the pioneers in it and uh, Steve Porch is really the pioneer. Deb Dana has, from, from a clinical standpoint, given us a lot of ways in which to use this as clinicians and as individuals. So I don't, uh, I'm not saying that this is something that Dr. Marr created all on her own. No, 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 no. But I find it to be such a useful skill and stuff that is just really applicable to all of us. So I want you to think this week what are my anchors? You know, what are the things that I do or the places that make me feel or the people that make me feel or the memories that I have or images that I can bring to mind that really make me feel safe, secure, and just anchored to this human family concept that I'm connected, that I'm wanted, that I'm loved. That's hard for some of us. And I am not saying this lightly and they're there. I promise you that your system, your nervous system, your brain, your mind body has figured this out through the years. It knows how to regulate itself. Listen, listen to the wisdom inside of you. It will tell you where to go, what to do, who to be with that makes you feel the best. And even imagery, even just like taking in a deep breath and imagining being in a place where you feel that way or being with the person that makes you feel that way. Going back to your grandma's kitchen when your grandma's been gone for years and years and years. Going back to, you know, that best friend or uh, playing in that fort under the pine tree when you were a little kid. Think about it. You have these stories. You have these images that you can go back to and anchor to. I hope that this has been helpful for you and that you can take this tool into your life. I'll see you next week, everybody.